So now we're going to talk about the concept of indefinite integrals. So far, up until now, we've only been talking about definite integrals. Indefinite integrals are a little bit different. They actually have a very different role in the subject. An indefinite integral, we use the same integral sign, but we don't put an upper and lower limit of integration on it. We say the indefinite integral of f of x dx is capital F of x plus c, where capital F of x is an antiderivative of f of x. Let's look at an example of how this notation works. Suppose you're asked to find the indefinite integral of x squared dx. According to this, you need an antiderivative. f of x, the integrand here, is x squared. One of the antiderivatives, capital F of x, is x cubed over 3. So we write down that the indefinite integral of x squared dx is equal to x cubed over 3 plus a constant. That's all there is to it. Let's look at another example. Suppose we want to find the indefinite integral of the square root of x dx. Well, in this case, f of x is the square root of x, but it would be simpler to find the antiderivative if we wrote it as x to the 1 half. If we do that, then we can find out what the antiderivative of is. One of the antiderivatives is x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. That is, we take the 1 half, we add 1 to it to get 3 halves, and we have x to the 1 half, or sorry, we have x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. 1 over 3 halves is 2 thirds, so we get 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. So that's a, one of the antiderivatives. And so then when we write the indefinite integral of x to the 1 half dx, that's the same as this. So this is equal to the integral of x to the 1 half dx, which is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. That's the antiderivative plus a general constant. When you do these indefinite integrals, you have to remember to add on a constant. Notice that the variable that we used here is the same as the variable we use here. So for indefinite integrals, this variable has a very special meaning. It's the variable that's used on both sides of the equation. And what we end up with over here is an expression for a function of x, where this variable is carried in this notation. So indefinite integrals really aren't that much different than antiderivatives. They just give us the general antiderivative, and they use a notation suggestive, suggestive of the integral in general. So you can think of indefinite integrals as just another notation for an antiderivative, and we'll be using them quite a bit in calculating quantities, and in particular, they're an intermediate step for calculating definite integrals.